Ta-da! What is happening out there in YouTube land? Yours truly, Rockin' Dave, the real deal. North Fort Myers, Southwest Florida. And I'm going to do another video where I show you the difference between the Epiphone Les Paul Studio that we have and we've had since 2009. And this is our, this is our 2013 um, Gibson Les Paul Standard Plus. Um, on the Epiphone, I had to spray the toggle switch, you know, with this stuff here. Because my uh, neck pickup wasn't, wasn't working. But on here, I thought it was the same situation, but it really wasn't. And here's the inside of this. This is the, uh, like I said, the 2000 Les Paul Standard Plus with the pull pots. And the out of phase switch, plus you get another additional pull pot on the bridge tone knob. And it's supposed to bypass all the electronics. Even if you had all the volumes down, you could pull that and you that switch out. And you go directly to the um, bridge pickup, which I think is kind of useless. But what happened was, I thought I was having a problem with... In here so I sprayed the hell out of there and I thought okay my problem is when I do the pull pot I, I get my coil tap but when I push it back in I it's like I got a weak bridge pickup so I sprayed the hell out of this because that's my bridge volume and I guess that wasn't really too much of it wasn't doing much of anything I kept on you know pulling the pot in and out and you know Putting it on 10, putting it on 0, turning it up and down, really nothing. But apparently I think this wire might have been loose. So, um, let's see. If I sit down, maybe you'll be able to hear it. Um, I don't know if you can see this. So, again, here is the last Paul on the... Uh <laughs> Here's the coil tap. And I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit so you can hear it a little bit. Now when I push my volume, it, it, it like folds it out. But how I really could tell is because here's my neck. And then here's the neck. But when I was having a problem with the switch, um... And when I would go into the middle, that wasn't the problem. See, again, it's active as the uh, coil tap. The problem I was having when I would pull out my neck pickups uh, volume tone, it seemed like the out of phase wasn't working. Now it's working. <laughs> So that kind of um, quacky, almost sounding, really wasn't coming through. And there are times I do use that for certain things. And it's like, okay, well, what's the point of having if it's not working? And even if you don't use it, what's the point if you have to always use your bridge pickup with the coil tab active? Let's say you want more full of sound. Now, I'm going directly, no effects or anything, directly into the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe George Benson model. And I am on the Overdrive channel, but I'm not on the More Drive. I got the Overdrive like one, on, and I'm the, the gain or the drive is actually at like one at, at number seven, one o'clock. So let's see if I clean this out. Let's see without, you know, having a catastrophe here, because I'll tell you what's not easy being me. Oh, here's my channel select. Okay, you'll be able to tell a little bit better this way. Now if I go... Yeah, can you hear that? That's activating only the coil tab, not the out of phase. And, uh, selector is down to the bridge pickup. Yeah, much better. 
So again, when I do, you know, my out of phase, it's not active yet. I'm neck position. I mean, I'm I'm calling both for a neck and bridge. So my selectors in the middle, both activated as call tapping, and now I'm going to pull my neck pickups tone to get the out of phase. It's almost like the P90 sound. Um, or it's the out of phase sound. You know, it's that. It's just that certain tone. And trust me, in the beginning. When I first heard it, I thought, oh, it's not too cool because it doesn't sound metal or it doesn't sound this or it doesn't sound that, or even with the jazz fusion. But lately, there are certain things that it gives a certain tone to, and it does cut through the mix, and especially when you're using like an overdrive pedal, um, or if you can use a distortion, you back off on the drive or gain, it really has a unique sound. But, so that's what, if you guys ever experience this problem, that's what it's going to be. Um, if, if you try to spray in here, you know, try that first. But chances are, if it's going to activate as a coil tapping, then the problem is going to be in the switch. Whether you got to spray it or, again, look at all these wires here. Um, it looks like I got a couple of resistors in there. Or maybe there's a couple of, you know, mini capacitors there. Um this could be uh, if they got microfarads, there'd be capacitors. Anyways, but yeah, you see, it's it's all right design. I mean, I love the guitar. It really, it really does have a uniqueness to it. You know, the flame really stands out. Um, you know, there's been certain issues with it, but you know, it is a nice guitar, nonetheless. So, anyways, but if you have that that issue, try that. You could try spraying it, or you could try wiggling some of these wires. And if that is still a, a problem, and if you do know how to fix your guitar, and you just think maybe there's something faulty, you know, supposedly when we're the first buyers of these brand new, we have a limited lifetime warranty. So there should be no problem going right to the Gibson factory. Um, now, well, it wouldn't matter. If we were in Illinois, all we had to do is go down to... To Nashville. Now we're in Florida. We just go up to Nashville and just go to the the, uh, the Gibson factory and say, "Hey, there's this problem. Do you think you can fix it? Uh, or if not, honor you know honor my money. Let me let me you know pick out another guitar. They should be able to do that. You know, you don't have to be some famous YouTuber <laughs> or or a famous guitar guitar player. Even if you're just doing it at your pleasure, the fact of the matter is you spent your hard earned money." And, you know, I'll tell you what, companies that do not honor people who spend their money are companies I never want to deal with. Because they might get my money once, but they won't get it twice. You know the old saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me? I don't let the shame on me happen. You know, I give people, I, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Everyone does make mistakes. That we understand. But when you put that aside, and if there's anything that you, you shouldn't have to... Uh, you know, if you could drop two to three thousand dollars on a guitar, you shouldn't have to do any work on it. You know, like I've I've said many times, my the Ibanez that we have here that you see me use a lot with the reverse headstock, the RGA, that thing's nearly flawless. It does not have this tone. I do love this tone, and I do love the way this guitar sounds, looks, and feels. And it does have the '60s neck, so the uh, Epiphone has the uh, more of like the '59 or the '50s. But anyways, I want to just don't want to babble on too much with this. That could be your problem, my friends, right in there. So, anyways, I hope this was informative, and um, thanks for you know watching and all your support. And uh, if you if, leave a comments down below, um, let me know what you think. If there's any luthiers out there, I know Mr. Zip Fix, he knows a lot about this stuff, and I know Brad the guitarologist does too. So just let me know. And, uh, you know, and I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I, there's no insults here. So don't, don't worry about, just let me know your honest opinion. Somebody might say, get rid of that crap, Dave, and just go back to the old Les Paul days. Yeah. But I do like the way some of this sounds for what I do. Anyways, my friends, uh, if this has been informative, hit the like button, subscribe, do all that good stuff. We really appreciate it. Until next video. You stay safe, you stay true, rock on, and God bless you, my friends. Rock on.